everybody. Um, thank you for uh, uh, listening to this uh, series of my lectures of uh, strategic marketing. Uh, I would uh, <coughs> I would like to urge everybody, uh, every one of my students, to please join this group uh, because uh, in that group uh, I'll be uploading various uh, supporting documents and various things. That you can get to download um, and uh, I'll be uploading all these videos uh, over this Facebook group so that everybody can get to access it and can get to uh, watch these videos uh, later in time so please join this group so uh, let me introduce myself I'm uh, Harun Asala Khan um, and uh, I welcome you all to this uh, uh, course called strategic marketing First of all, we are going to discuss a uh, few concepts about uh, marketing and strategic marketing and, and then we are going to go on explaining things in a detailed fashion. I would urge you all to please keep a notebook, journal or something to write down so that whenever uh, I can get to explain things, you will be able to uh, write down and uh, you can uh, once you can get to write down all these things you can later you can get to recall it and you can uh, uh, refer it back whenever that you want uh, you can also get to play this video over and over again if you um, if you have uh, if you are unable to understand few of the concepts so uh, this video is, uh, is, uh, is for you so let's get on with these uh, concepts of uh, strategic marketing <coughs> okay um, there are a few terms that I'll be covering uh, these are basically the fundamentals of marketing and uh, by covering all these we'll uh, proceed onwards with the more uh, advanced topics right so uh, let's get on with a few of these terms starting from uh, marketing and value creation so what is marketing According to the uh, Philip Kotler's simplified definition, uh, marketing can be remembered with the simple uh, abbreviations of uh, CCDVTP. Now, it may so sound a little odd, but uh, CCDVTP, if you tend to remember these acronym, you will be able to uh, not only define what marketing is but you would also be able to understand what marketing is all about so ccdvtp stands for creating communicating delivering value to target market for profit or value <clears throat> now when we talk about um, this definition uh, when we say creating it encompasses everything that that uh, a marketer uh, a marketer does for creating uh, a product or service or something that uh, that has its value so the entire process of creation is uh, incorporated in this definition so therefore by definition creating product or services is actually part of marketing now let's move on to the second word which is called communicating now by communication we mean once the product is developed how the the marketer is going to communicate the the message about about availability of its its product to its uh, to its customer or to people what channels the marketer would be using there there are several channels that the marketers can can use uh, or uh, starting from uh, word of mouth to TV commercial, radio spots, uh, billboards, um, brochure, or social media, or whatever uh, channel that uh, that are available, the the marketer can use all these channels in order to communicate <coughs> to its uh, to its people about the availability of the product. Now, <coughs> so therefore, the entire communication process. Uh, is incorporated in the marketing definition which means by definition communicating to the, to the customers or uh, communicating to the target market is actually part of marketing 
Now, then we move on to the delivering part. Once you create the product and you communicate uh, the information about that product to, to your current or uh, potential customers, then once the order is uh, is placed, then you need to deliver it, deliver the goods or the product to the to the the concerned customer as well. So the mechanism and uh, how you're going to deliver that product to the customers is incorporated in the delivery mechanism, or we call these thing distribution channels. <clears throat> so which distribution channel are you going to use, and uh, how you're going to deliver the 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 goods and services to the uh, to the target customer uh, it, de it depends upon the product it depends upon the customers it depends upon the, uh, how ge geographically the customer is apart and uh, how and which mechanism and which methods you are you are using in order to deliver the goods to your customers <coughs> then th therefore delivering the goods and services to the customer is also part of marketing now <clears throat> so by definition creating communicating delivering value now when we talk about value we're going to discuss more about values in the detail and in the coming slides but value is something which is important which is something uh, what the customer is preferring and uh, um, what the com uh, what the customer is willing to sacrifice in order to get it so value is something which uh, which is uh, in in the customer's mindset about how important the product or the service or the something that he or she is getting is important to to him or her so <clears throat> so it's about delivering value if 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 uh, if the customer is getting product then the product have to be valuable to the customers as well so <clears throat> only then uh, the customer would be willing to uh, pay off for th for that offer or for that uh, product or service now so uh, delivering value to target market when we talk about target market it's, it's actually the target market consists of people who are willing to buy your product or whom you consider that would would uh, or will be able to give um, the the money in order to get your product or services so not everybody is going to buy your product or services so so only selected people uh, of the uh, selected people are going to buy it and that's and those selected people are basically called the target market so so it's creating, communicating, delivering value to delivering value to target market for profit. Now, once the once the value and once the good and services are delivered to the target market, in exchange, what you are expecting to get is basically profit or money or maybe, in another word, you are uh, you are willing to get some sort of of uh, other an exchange which in which something which is valuable to you right so so according to by definition creating communicating delivering value to target market for profit is is called marketing which means everything that you do in order to create the product or create the offer anything that you do in order to communicate the message to your target customers every, any every each and everything that you do in order to in order to make sure that your customer gets to deliver the, the offer and uh, and and you create value to your customer through your offering and you deliver it to specific number of people in order to get profit is that's what we call marketing so this is a very simplified definition of the marketing which encompasses everything regarding the product development regarding the communication channels uh, which includes the advertisement promotion public relations word of mouth billboard and whatever and uh, delivering which includes all the distribution channel and uh, everything that you do in order to make uh, in order to make your offer reach to the target market uh, is uh, is included in delivering and uh, everything that you do in order to find out about who are going to buy your product and services everything that you do in order to create value to your customers 
everything that you do to, in order to find out what is going on in the market and and how you can get to know about how you can get to deliver the value in the competitive uh, market and uh, how can you get profit in return and or how you can get value in return is what marketing is all about so moving on <coughs> so what is marketing marketing is engaging the customers and managing profitable customer relationships so it's not a, just about delivering value to the customer it's it's about creating a long term relationship with your customer so that not only uh, the customer would keep coming back to you and uh, would be able to get more product and services but also it would generate more profit for your business so the main uh, there are two main goals of it and one is to attract new customer by promising superior value how can you attract new customer you can only attract customer if if you create some value which the customers want and uh, with uh, and uh, and making sure that there's a demand for it and to keep and grow cur current customers which means you need to uh, keep the existing customers that uh, that are already purchasing your goods and services and you also need to grow the current current customer which means you also need to expand the customer base you you also need to increase uh, the number of the customers which are already purchasing and you need to attract new customers and you need to grow these customers so that uh, by delivering values and satisfaction uh, by delivering values and and uh, making sure that they uh, they get satisfied with your value with your product with your services so these are actually the two goals of of marketing one is to attract new customers towards your product towards your services and another is to keep the current customers keep keeping in the relationship uh, stronger with the uh, with the current customer and uh, and grow current customer which means in order to um, in order to uh, get more profit you need to expand the customer base you need to build more strong relationship with the current customers and uh, by satisfying them by delivering high uh, high value so that they would get satisfied and they um, they tell other people about your product and services so that new customer can be generated okay so <coughs> so what is marketing there is also a simplified uh, um, um, more simpler definition to uh, ccdvtp and that is uh, simplifying it even further it is actually creating managing and expanding beneficial or profitable customer relationship now this is actually uh, what marketing is uh, is basically the purpose of the marketing is is to creating managing and expanding beneficial customer relationship it's all about create creation of the relationship with your customers and and the and and that kind of relationship that can bring benefit not only to the customer but to you as well uh, uh i've written the uh, the term beneficial because not mainly the profit is actually not the goal of uh, creating the relationship but it it's actually an essential part of it so and uh, whatever that you do in order to create the relationship whatever that you do in order to manage the relationship and whatever that you do in order to expand this these relationships or or to make it make it stronger and uh, make customer more loyal everything that you do in order to create manage and expand customer relationship beneficial relationship is called marketing so in a in a more pictorial form if we get to uh, if we get to represent this in a more pictorial form this is what marketing is all about it's mutual beneficial relationship between the buyers and the seller and uh, making a relationship work and and making the relationship is stronger so that both party get the benefits of being in this relationship so this is what marketing is actually all about it doesn't matter what product are you giving it doesn't matter what uh, um, value you are getting from from the customers it's it's all about 
creating relationship beneficial relationship among uh, among your um, among your customers and um, among other people as well so this is what marketing is all about okay <clears throat> the aim of the marketing is to create value for the customer as we have already told you uh, that can satisfy the customer need the customer uh, creating value we are going to discuss more about uh, what value is actually about so uh, what value is so but uh, we already told you value is something which the customer uh, uh, is important to the customer and uh, with uh, and, and the customer is willing to uh, give out money and the uh, customer is willing to sacrifice in order uh, something to in order to get it so it's it's about create value for the customers by satisfying uh, the customers needs and uh, and capture value from the customer in return which means it's actually an exchange relationship what marketing is all about it's it's about creating an exchange relationship a stronger relationship and everything that you do in order to main to create maintaining and making that those relationships stronger is what marketing is all about so so this is what uh, uh, marketing is okay so the role of marketing is to identify the customer the, the identifying the right amount of people uh, the right kind of people or customers who would buy your product for that you need to understand the customer's wants and need you need to identify that who's the target and how to reach those target what uh, what their what are their want what are their need what are their problem uh, what are the things that they require which are not available in the market so uh, who uh, is seeking those values and who are actually um, willing to pay for it so that is your identifying the target market or identifying the customer it's one of the main role of marketing satisfying the customer with the uh, with the with the offer or with the product or the services is, is the second role making the right product and the right service available to the right people at the right time uh, right time with the right money uh, is uh, hoping that that would uh, satisfy the customer making everyone feel better off from the exchange is what custom uh, satisfying customer is all about and hopefully if the customer is, uh, are satisfied they're going to tell more people about it and uh, hopefully more customer would come to your uh, which, which uh, will come to your business and uh, would uh, get more of your product and the services now the third role of the marketing is to retain the customers as we said that not only uh, it's not going to be a one time uh, we have to make sure that it's not going to be just just a one time purchase but it's going to uh, the the customer will become your loyal customer and your permanent customer so that uh, the customer would would stay and would continue to purchase the product and the services so uh, giving customers the reason to keep coming back and finding opportunity to win their business uh, finding new opportunity to win their business uh, which means uh, finding opportunity so that uh, you can uh, get them to uh, like your product and to finding opportunities uh, or finding ways so that uh, uh, you can get them to buy your product and services so that uh, you can get uh, their money and you can get uh, the products uh, the profit from them okay so uh, these are the few roles of the marketing okay now the five core marketing place concepts are basically uh, these want need demand market market offering um, which can be anything uh, regarding pro product services and experiences then we have values and satisfaction and then exchange and relationship and fifth is market offers okay now let's start with the uh, with the first want need and demand so what's a need um, according to the marketing definition it's the recognition of the gap between the consumer actual state and the ideal state so it's it's actually a gap now when we talk about actual state it, it is where the where the, the condition in which the customer is currently in 
and uh, which is uh, uh, and the situation in which the customer would really want uh, doesn't want to be remain in and uh, certainly they want to to be in the ideal state or or the state in which they want to move to this could be uh, that if a customer has a uh, has a low end cell phone and they they wish to get a high end cell phone so this this is clearly a gap between the uh, actual state what they actually have and what they actually desire so there's a gap between the ideal state and the actual state so this is what we call gap in which the marketers call it a need so if there is a gap that exists between the actual state and the ideal state then this is what we call a need okay now there's a um, another definition which is called it is the state of being felt deprivation felt deprivation means something is missing uh, something is missing from your life and you desperately want to have and uh, and, you, and and you have a strong feeling that you should get that and this is what felt deprivation uh, is all about so when the marketer says that you feel that something is missing from their life and you you are you are quite desperate in order to get it so this is what uh, this is what we call need and uh, if there's a need we we can offer you something that in order to get you out from this uh, desperation and uh, actually this is called felt deprivation so um, so this is a need and the last uh, the definition of the need which is actually an economic definition is called a thing that is necessary for an organism to live a healthy life uh, a deficiency causes dysfunction or death which means um, uh, anything that helps the organism or helps the human or animal or whatever in order to live a healthy life in order to sustain its life in order to keep its life from uh, decaying uh, if the the thing or the uh, if the thing or or the uh, something which is quite essential for the life it uh, doesn't reach the organism or to the uh, the human this would uh, would result in a dysfunction of the body or or may cause death as well so so if a man is left in a desert uh, uh, for uh, for a day or two and uh, uh, without without the necessary means to survive so uh, maybe a water bottle or maybe a water or food a shelter maybe these are basically the needs of uh, of that person so so need is uh, let me uh, recap that again need is the recognition of the gap between the consumer actual state a state where the the consumer is actually in a position in the what the consumer is actually at and the ideal state where the consumer wants uh, wants to be or wants to have so if there is a gap between the ideal state uh, actual state and the ideal state if there is a gap is something is missing it means that uh, um, it's a need and the second definition is the state of uh, being felt deprivation which means the strong feeling of that something is missing from the life that something can be um, can be food something can be a house or something can be a car something can be a diamond ring something can be a luxury yacht or something if you have a strong feeling of uh, that uh, uh, that is something that you need to have now that is something they call it it's a need which can be addressed so by this definition yes marketers can create need but if the definition is this which is an economic definition the things that is necessary for a, for a organism a human being to live a healthy life then by this definition marketers cannot create need need is something which which occurs naturally in the uh, in the in the human and in the living organism and which cannot be uh, created it is something which is there and marketers cannot create need okay now second uh, next is the demand now demand is something that if a customer has uh, has need or want and is uh, and is willing to uh, and has a strong will to 
to fulfill that demand and has buying power and uh, has money to to purchase that uh, offer who the offer that is going to satisfy the needs and want so then we call it a demand which means that uh, there they must exist the want and the need from the customers for for the something that that can be fulfilled and his will his agreement that uh, he is willing to get it and then uh, he should have the the money in order to buy that product or service so these are the three elements which must exist if uh, uh, even a single element is missing from this equation or from this uh, from the sequence it would not it would not be called a demand okay <clears throat> Now we can elaborate this with a with a with a with a table. If there is a uh, if there uh, if there is no need for it and there is uh, and the customer doesn't want it but is willing to purchase it and he has a buying power, then it would not be called a demand. If the customer has wants and need but is not ready to buy it and yet he or she has the the money for it even then it would not be called demand and uh, if there is a want and need for it and uh, the customer is willing to get that but he doesn't have the means and the and the resources to get it and he doesn't have the money to get it even then it would not be called a demand so demand only exists we call it something demand if there is a want and need for it from the customers and uh, the customer is willing to get it and the customer has the buying power only then we can call it a demand okay now based on the um, demand consumer demand theory there are certain types of goods oh, one good are basically one type of good are basically called the inferior good uh, these are basically the good that decreases in demand when the customer income increases if the customer uh are getting more money uh, as an income then the customer would leave that good and would purchase a high quality or or move on to some new product or services which would uh, give uh, him or her the higher value so leaving behind the old things or uh, or the product or the services that they used to get when uh, when they were poor are basically called the inferior goods now normal goods are basically kind of goods for which the demand increases when the income increases and falls when the income decreases but price remains constant which means if the if the customers is getting more money uh, if the customer is getting richer their demand for those products would also increase the customer would be willing to get more um, would be willing to uh, would be willing to get more products more services and would be consuming more and if uh, the customer is getting poor the demands for uh, the demand for it would uh, would fall down so this is something uh, these are basically the goods or services which are what we call normal goods and and then there is a substitutes a substitute is basically a, basically a product or service that satisfy the need of a consumer but another product or the service is already available in the market uh, for which the customer could can always go for and would uh, would fulfill the demand and would fulfill the need for it so if this is the case which means that your product or your service is just a substitute for another product or service okay now the second concept would call marketing offering so what is an offer so offer marketing offer is something that is being offered in the market that is basically being provided in the market available in the market for the consumer to purchase that has value for the targeted cus consumer or customer now this is something which is available in the market so that the customer can buy it that has value the customer is only willing to buy uh, something which if he thinks he or she thinks that is important and uh, it would bring certain benefits that uh, that against which they would be willing to pay money for it and these are basically the people who are being targeted by those offer 
so offer is something which is uh, which is basically uh, available in the market that can satisfy the want and need and uh, the consumer is willing to purchase it because they see some value in it some benefits in it and they are basically the targeted customers okay <coughs> Uh, there's another definition it is the package of value which addresses to an untapped area of consumers needs and want now that's another definition of offer it's a package of value it's a it's a package that has some value or package of value it could be um, the package could contain various benefits which addresses to an untapped area uh, an area of a customer's want and need which the customer is not getting and uh, this is something which is not available in the, in the market yet yet only your cost uh, your product and your uh, your services would be able to fulfill the need and uh, would fulfill the de uh, the demand and wants for it so an offer is actually a package of value or something that is basically being offered in the market that has value to the target uh, to the targeted customers now offer can be of many things it may be uh, it may include a product a service an experience an emotion a series of emotions idea a place personality or maybe just the concept of ease of doing something now offer includes uh, may include each and everything uh, or one of these things which are available in, in the market and the customer is willing to pay for it that can that can fulfill the need and want what they want and what uh, their requirements are so this is something what we call offer okay now <clears throat> let's distinguish uh, between the customer consumer and client now customer is someone a person an entity who buys or pays for the offer uh, he he or she may not be a, a, a consumer but whoever is paying for it is actually the customer the example is baby diapers mother buys them so mother are basically the uh, the customers but uh, and uh, consumers are basically the person or entity who consumes or uses uh, your offer so in this case in baby diapers baby uses them or baby uh, babies are basically the consumer so uh, so this is something the mother buys them and baby consumes them so mother are, are basically the customers and babies are consumers and then we have clients a uh, client is a person or entity who repeatedly buys and consumes your business offer especially services now when a customer repeatedly buys your product or services it becomes a client but mainly client are basically the term is often used for b2b transaction or business to business transaction or if you're offering some services then your customers are actually your clients for example a lawyer a lawyer always has it has his or her clients right okay let's move on let's um, discuss the value and the satisfaction now value is one of the most important concept in marketing so what is value value is actually by definition it's called the sum of perceived tangible and intangible benefits received from the offering against the cost or hassle which means uh it's the perceived what the con consumer or the customers is is thinking which is tangible and intangible benefits that they are receiving by getting the offer or getting the product or the services and against the cost or a hustle which means how much money are they willing to pay for it and how much 
difficulties or a hustle or a, uh, or a stress or tension or difficulties uh, uh, they have to uh, do in order to get that offer so this is something which is called value in a plain and simple definition um, value is equals to benefits received minus uh, price and hustle w what this equation tells us is that the value is something that has uh, something would have the value if all the benefits that you're receiving is greater than the price or the cost that you're paying for it and and the hustle or the difficulties that you that you are uh, willing to um, willing to bear for it if the this price that they're you're giving out and the difficulties that you're facing uh, is less than the the benefits that you're receiving then definitely the product of the services or the offer that you're getting would have value it's now the value is basically the combination of quality service and price it's a customer value trade how much customer is willing to sacrifice in order to get the benefits of uh, benefits that uh, that the offer is uh, uh, offer is giving you so so that is what we call value okay so in terms of customers value value can be of different type uh, value could be functional or instrumental value, which means the the product or the services how uh, how well the uh, the product or the services is 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 functioning, uh, what uh, what uh, what the um, how the uh, the internal mechanism of of the offer is is working, and uh, if for example if you if you are getting a television set, so how well the television set is performing what the functions and how features and and quality and uh, the the, uh, the the product would have and how well the function is performing uh, for that television set now that is basically the functional value if you're if you're getting an lcd and you and, and you're getting the additional um, various channels and built-in features in it so that is something and uh, and they're performing smoothly then we then this is something which is called the functional value so correct and ac accurate attribute uh, appropriate performance and appropriate outcome are basically the functional value if something which is performing according to the specification is uh, according to the the customer's expectation then this is called the functional value now experiential uh, experiential value or uh, hedonic value is something which is which which can bring you an emotional or a satisfying effect it's the sensory emotional social or relation or estimatic uh, estimic um, value that uh, the the um, the offer is going to give you so if um, if you're getting um, a house a house uh, not only would have the functional value but also would have the uh, experiential uh, experiential value because a uh, house is uh, would uh, would later turn into a home so that would have the emo that you would have the emotional value uh, for that house now symbolic or expressive value is something which uh, which you would like uh, or we call it a prestige uh, something which can uh, highlight you in in front of others or uh, helps you to define who you are it's uh, the uh, self identity worth or personal meaning that you drive from that offer or self expression that you uh, would you like to express to the other people that who you are uh, or uh, giving uh, or give a social meaning or gives you the chance to uh, to be accepted in the society so this is something what we call symbolic or expressive value now cost or uh, sacrifice value how much cost or, or uh, what have you sacrificed uh, in terms of getting those values so this is called the economic the price that you have uh, uh, the price that you have paid uh, psychological uh, tr uh, pressure or difficulties that you have gone through in order to get the value 
or a personal investment that you have done or or the risk that you have avoided or uh, the the risk that you have secured uh, or uh, maintain is what uh, the cost or sacrifice value is all about so value to customer value a customer uh, can be uh, the value can be functional experiential symbolic or cost okay now how a value is created now take a look at these three circles in a in a form of a Venn diagram now this circle represents uh, the company or the marketer what the marketer is really good at what are their capabilities what are their performance what are their uh, what are their best that they, that they do and this is something which is what the customer or the prospect uh, really wants what the, what are, what are their needs what are their want what are their problems what are their um, what are their gap that they are willing to f fulfill that and and in the market uh, there's another uh, situation which uh, there's something which exists and we call it the competitors so what the competitor is really good at and what the competitor is offering in the market so your value proposition how can you create the value in the eyes of your consumer is placed in here so your value proposition lies here so you need to create something that you're really good at that can help the customers in order to fulfill their want and need and yet this is something which is not being offered by your competitors so this is this is the area where you need to uh, you need to start uh, you need to um, be into and you need to create a value which is something your competitors are, are unable to uh, create or are not offering to the market so if you offer something which is of value to the consumer the men benefit that they are willing to get and the uh, and ready to uh, and uh, and ready to pay for it and you're really good at something and yet your competitor is not offering in those things in the market then this is something what we call uh, the value proposition so this is how the value is created for the consumer and for the customers okay <clears throat> i hope you're understanding what uh, the concept that i'm trying to explain here okay let's move forward now now from the value creation if if something which is uh, of raw material it 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 may hold certain values but it would not have a superior value so in order to uh, in order to create superior value the the raw material needs to convert it into a finished good so that the customer would would uh, would be ready to pay a higher amount for it so for example the cotton uh, cotton has a very low value but if it has gone through certain uh, garment factories and uh, and turn into a, a, a t-shirt then this t-shirt the customer would be willing to pay a higher amount for it so it's low added value low level of design uh, high price sen sensitivity low brand loyalty customers are not going to stick to um, to this product or services and um, it, it's something that uh, it's uh, undifferentiated market so this is something which is uh, in the differentiated uh, market stuff it's finished product add a uh, high added value high level of design low price sensitivity high brand loyalty and irregular purchase okay now value cycle <clears throat> um when you when you um when you create a value proposition you create uh, first you need to find out what are the value expectation then you need to uh, find out the what value uh, what are the value drivers what the customers want and need and how it can be addressed and then you need to 
uh, identify and you need to create value proposition you need to create value then you need to uh, you need to do a value creation activity so that the value can be created the products can be created and the and then once the product is created then you need to deliver all these values uh, from uh, uh, these values and these products to the to the customer and then uh, and once the uh, when the uh, the value is delivered to the customers the customer would feel whether the the value of the benefit that they get is worth it or not so by the uh, by getting those values and if they uh, their expectations are fulfilled they would be satisfied if their expectations are not fulfilled they would be dissatisfied so 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 you need to find out what are their expectation what are their want and need in order to keep coming back with the with uh, with more valuable products and that way you will hopefully would be able to satisfy your customers and willing to uh, and uh, would be able to uh, get more customers through this value cycle okay from profit uh, from problem to profit uh, there's a quote that uh, i usually say in my class and uh, that is something that i've uh, come up with it's called every problem has multiple solution and every solution is a business opportunity for marketers to earn profit now when you take a closer look at this quote i'm saying every prob problem has multiple solution and every solution is a business opportunity for marketers to earn profit if you take it uh, if you look at from the from the um, from the uh, from the uh, more elaborative point of view every problem has multiple solutions and every solution has uh, and every solution is basically a business opportunity for the marketers in order to earn profit right now suppose um, suppose there's a um, there's a disease which is going on which is called dengue which is basically um, originated by uh, mosquitoes and uh, the mosquito is um, through through the uh, when the mosquito get bite uh, to a certain person then uh, the the person would get dengue but that's actually a problem now the now dengue or uh, can be avoided if uh, if the if the mosquitoes if we solve the the problem of the of getting rid of all the mosquitoes so one of the solution is that we can we can hire a, a filament sort of an instrument which can uh, can lead and can kill the, those um, mosquitoes then um, another solution is that we can get to um, have a, a, a liquid um, a liquid uh, chemical or solution uh, if we can get to light it up with the ele uh, electrical uh, socket it it gets evaporated and the uh, the mosquito would get killed or would get uh, would get burned third is actually um, uh, a, a liquid or a solution or a chemical that you can apply on the body so that the mosquito would get tripled and would not uh, would not bite you and fourth is uh, purchasing a net and uh, and putting that net over your uh, over your bed so that so that uh, so that the mosquito would not bite you so each and every solution is actually a business opportunity you can you can start developing the filament and through that uh, uh, you can get to sell those filament in order to get the profit you can get to uh, manufacture those uh, liquid uh, mosquito repeller solutions and uh, and you can get profit from that and you can uh, you can manufacture the uh, the uh, liquid uh, or ornament solution that the the people can apply and through selling those uh, uh, mosquito repellent solution uh, in in two form you can get to earn profit and lastly you can get to manufacture the net 
which can be hung over by um, hung on the on, on the bed and uh, and that way uh, you can get to earn profit but it depends upon what solution are you going for how much uh, the customer is uh, paying for it let's pause for a moment okay so it, it depends which solution are you uh, aiming for and which solution is appropriate for the for the consumers or for the customers to uh, that would see higher value for uh, for that solution and uh, how much how it would be feasible for your business to manufacture those solution and to sell it so that you can get to earn profit so which solution is uh, is uh, which would bring what opportunities to your company and how that opportunity can be translated into a profit that can uh, that can be targeted by the marketers so this is something which uh, which is something that should be understood by the uh, should be understood by the uh, by the students so every problem has multiple solution and every solution is a business opportunity for the marketers to earn profit okay <coughs> let's move on so in the market you're not the only one who is who is uh, selling the product and the services and offering something which is of uh, which is of value in order to sustain in order to compete in the uh, competitive environment which is actually the market you have to create something which is which has uh, which is something which is called competitive advantage a comparative advantage is actually the firm's ability to create a unique value in a way its rivals cannot which means you have to create a product and services uh, in a way and the product and services has to be uh, such a good product that your competitors are are unable to compete with that which means the product has to be unique it's different has to be different and unique hard for your competitors to match or difficult for your competitors to copy and the uh, the product and the offer should also have superior value for the customer the, the customer should uh, would also uh, should love your love your um, product and services love should love your offer and and the product and the customer would be willing to pay for it uh, why because they are not getting those product from anybody else only you are se you are selling it and and which is unique which is different which is liked by your customer and which your competitors are unable to copy or uh, it's very difficult for your competitors to match so this is something uh, what we call comparative advantage how can you create an offer which can give you a competitive advantage in the market so uh, whatever the offer that you're creating it has to have these three elements one is the uniqueness it has to be unique it has to be different it has to be something which uh, which cannot be created uh, by anyone anybody else except except you and second it must be hard for your competitors to match they shouldn't uh, it they are um, they shouldn't be able to copy it or they shouldn't be able to create something which is equivalent to your offer or equivalent to your uh, product and it would be fairly difficult for them to match your level and your quality of the of the product and yet the offer should be something which is ha which have superior value and which is loved by your customer so if yeah, whatever that you're offering or whatever that you're um, whatever that you're offering in the market or whatever that you're willing to sell to your customer is unique it's hard for your competitors to match and yet your customers loved it uh, loved it this is something which we call uh, then that offer would help you to create a competitive advantage in the market it would help your business to bring more profit it helps your business to uh, to create a certain place in the market and would help you to create uh, and help you 
to 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 create your offer and to make it as a brand so <clears throat> So comparative advantage by definition is anything that the firm does especially well compared to its rivalry. When a firm can do something that the rival, uh, rivals firms cannot do or own something that the rivals firm desire that can represent a comparative advantage. When a, rival, when a firm can do something that rivals firm cannot do or own something that the rival, rival firm desire that can represent a com that can represent a comparative advantage okay now <clears throat> the pursuit of comparative advantage leads to organizational success or failure now when if you are creating a product which is unique hard to copy and love by your customers now that can lead you towards success or towards a failure it depends upon now how if you have a strong comparative advantage towards a uh, um, for your product and uh, yet um, somehow it would fail now there could be two reasons for it one there could be external factors which which are beyond your control which 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 uh, which which can allow your product to fail or there could be an internal factor uh, that you have missed out which can fulfill the uh, uh, the demands or the requirements or the wants and the needs of the of your consumer okay it is not etiquette to simply obtain comparative advantage which means that the uh, the comparative advantage uh, of the firm exists in the marketplace which means that the uh, if you are uh, if your business exists in the marketplace then you uh, you have comparative advantage you have an edge over other competitors now this is something that uh, it's not just adequate to simply achieve that you have to maintain that as well a firm must strive to achieve sustained competitor can competitor advantage by through uh, by agility ability to quickly adapt to changes and formulating implementing and evaluating these strategies over and over again so how can you achieve competitor advantage you need to Go back to the drawing board. You need to keep on coming up with a new product and the new services that has comparative advantage, which is which are unique, which are hard for your competitors to copy and loved by your customers. And you need to maintain those uh, qualities, you, those uniqueness, so that only then you would be able to maintain that competitive advantage in the market. Okay. let's move to uh, another concept which is satisfaction <clears throat> now satisfaction or customer satisfaction is something which is feeling of pleasure by fulfillment of expectation from the offer which means um, if the consumer feels the sense of pleasure when their expectations or when their need and want and what they're thinking of getting is uh, is fulfilled only then we can call it the customer is satisfied <clears throat> okay uh, <clears throat> it's it's the, another definition is to extend uh, the extent to which the product perceived performance matches a, a buyer's expectation now there's a simple uh, equation for it <clears throat> satisfaction is equals to perceived values or perceived or received values against the expected value if if the if the perceived value or the value that is received or the benefit or the sum of perceived all tangible and intangible benefit that the customer is getting against uh, what the customer was expecting the benefit that uh, he or she was expecting to get if there's a difference between that and if the benefits of the value that you're receiving is higher and your expectation is lower then then the customer would be satisfied then this the satisfaction would emerge uh, you can you can think of it in terms of this way P if the P is greater than E which P means perceived value and the E is the expected value if the perceived value or the or the value or the benefit that that's received is greater 
then the expected value or the or the value or the benefit that the customer was expend, uh, ex expecting to get he or she has got more value more benefit then obviously the customer would be delighted customer which means the customer would be a very happy customer and he would uh, he or she would stick stick longer to uh, to the company's offer and uh, would not only would stick longer but also uh, would be um, would be willing to bring other other um, uh, people and uh, make them your customers only if the perceived value is greater than the expected value only then the customer would be delighted and customer would be happy if the perceived value is equal to the expected value which means if the perceived value or if the value that the customer has received is equal to what the uh, the expected value the customer has thought of that uh, the customer was expecting to get certain benefits and exactly he or she got the exact benefit then the customer would be a satisfied customer but <clears throat> he would be a vulnerable customer which means he would he would uh, and would be an unhooked customer uh, which means that the he would stick to your offering would stick to your offer would would get your product and services as long as the expectations are fulfilled if someone else is is offering more benefits against what he or she is expecting then the customer would 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 simply switch to another brand would switch to another product would switch to another company so if the perceived value or value received is equals to the expected value the customer would be satisfied but he or she would be an unhoped customer he would be or she would be a vulnerable customer your competitor can easily grab your customers if you're offering the customers exact amount of value what the customer is expecting nothing less nothing more if the perceived value is less than the expected value if the what if the customer is receiving or perceived value is is less what he's getting is less and what he or she was expecting is more was more then obviously the customer would be a dissatisfied customer and that would uh, uh, that would be a destructive customer to you to your business because not only that the customer would be dissatisfied but he would likely to show his feeling his emotion his, and his anger towards your staff towards your company towards your product and he or she would be willing to uh, will go out and would tell other friends and people regarding uh, regarding um, regarding the dissatisfaction that the the consumer is getting with from uh, from those offer so satisfy customers by again and tell other others about their good experiences dissatisfied customers often switch to comparator and uh, disparage the product to others okay this is something uh, uh, this was something which is what we called the customer satisfaction uh, 